Pickaxe. And welcome back to the Review of Death, your fortnightly home for Doctor Who news and reviews. I'm Matthew Toffolo. I'm joined, as ever, by Billy Garrett-John. How you doing, Billy? Who are? I'm all right, thanks, mate. Yeah, you haven't gone native yet. You still, you still got your who are? I do. Um, I do the odd yeah na, and yeah, nah. uh, I watch a lot of Police Ten Seven, which is basically their police camera accident. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, this will mean nothing to anyone who isn't from New Zealand. But no. whenever we go past the police car in any area locally, I do the voiceover guy from Police 107 going, it's late afternoon and only hunger. And there's a domestic <laughs> violence issue, which is inevitable. Oh, fuck, my chair's gone. Um, <laughs> there we go. What a great way to start. Um, it's been a, of, chao- it's um, been a chaotic start because I, I, I was going to say I have my audacity all up on my screen uh, whilst we were recording. So, who, you know, it's it's too early like, in the morning and it's too late it's at too night early, for you. And it's too late. It's just uh, and talking of that and talking of things falling apart and complete chaos. Yes. And the world ending for anyone who lives within the British Isles. Yeah. Let's talk about the big news that came out mm. uh, last week and it was uh, all part of uh, Red Nose Day. We give yep. with one hand and they taketh away <laughs> with the other. Um, it was trailed by Russell the day before. Is yeah, that right? That's right. That there yeah. was going to be some kind of announcement imminent, destination yeah. unknown. And um, what it turned out to be was a-, a couple of clips from the new series. How was mm. that presented, by the way, that little segment? Was it like new season of drama sort of BBC trail or I don't know if it even I don't even think it was aired on BBC one I think it just no. got announced I, th- I think so I don't know I, I I mean I I was at work and then the news broke okay so it was different it was funny actually because uh, I mean I don't know if I'm allowed to say this but I was actually filming something for Disney at the time and ah. I came out of filming something for Disney only to find out that Disney had fucked me <laughs> <laughs> my favourite programme. <laughs> you weren't on the Disney Channel, were you, back in the early 2000s? Yeah, I was. <laughs> Not f- fuck you like that. Okay. Um, How they do it. What's the thing? Uh, someone will, the someone will get it on top. There you go. Uh, <laughs> um, it's like that girl from oh, no, in the forest of the night. So you, it was in the middle of the day, did you say, the announcement? Yeah, it was about, well, about lunchtime, I guess. Um, I just right. finished filming. I sat down. I thought, I'll just see what's going on on Twitter. And then here it was. The new Meltdown. air date for Doctor Who is out on iPlayer first. So, I mean, so obviously what they're trying to do here is make sure that it goes out at the same time for everybody, which is commendable because in that way, mm. no one can have it spoiled. Unfortunately, unless you live in the UK and you have to get up at mid, well, or don't go to bed until midnight to watch it. That's a bit of a pain in the ass. I mean, obviously, people are going to turn around and say, well, just stay off social media um, and just watch it the next morning, which is what I will do, inevitably. Mm. But, oh, it's weird, isn't it? The thought of watching Doctor Who first thing in the morning. I posted a little tweet saying, like, oh, it's going to take me back to watching Doctor Who on UK Gold, uh, watching Doctor Who first thing in the morning, like new Doctor Who. Mm. Um but it is going to seem very strange that there's not this communal sense of like everyone's watching it at the same time. And I sort of, when I first read it and it said, uh, catch it first at midnight on iPlayer, part of my brain went, oh fuck, I'm going to have to stay up and watch it. And then another part of my brain, the logical part of my brain just went, no, don't be stupid. Why would you do that? I know you like this program, but you don't like it that much to stay up at midnight till two o'clock in the morning to... Now, this is the bit that really pisses me off. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm surprised less people have said this. Why are they releasing the first two episodes back to back? Now, I know well, that is a Disney Plus thing. They like to do that for some reason. Mm. The series is only eight episodes as it is. So we've already lost a week when this could be going out. Mm. The midnight thing is bollocks, but I could I could live with that. That's fine. You know, 
if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. So is it's, it the double episode release that's the, pissed you off the most? The double episode thing has really annoyed me. Because, I mean, like, think of it for us. How are we going to do this? We're going to go, oh, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the review of Death. We've got a double whammy for you tonight. Strap in for four hours of us talking about Doctor Who on a yeah. spaceship. And then after that, we're doing Doctor Who meets the Beatles with Jinx Monsoon. Four. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Maybe we do it, you know, we do it biblically. We do it to the letter <laughs> as it's always, you know, been written in Doctrine that episode two comes out the week that episode two goes out on BBC One. But, but I, I think I think anybody both, wants to drop us some money on, on Patreon. BBC One as oh, well, fuck, I think. really? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the plan. No way. I think so. Oh, yeah, because it's Eurovision weekend. Yeah. Right. The campus so they thought weekend before, of the year. I was just going to say, before Who. this camp old shit comes out, let's put some uh, more I love it. I am buzzing for Eurovision anyway, so that's a perfect lead in. Um, You're going to be camped out. I will be camp, way, way camped out. So, obviously, being in New Zealand, this isn't affecting me quite as much. No. No. Uh, because I think we get it around midday, 11 yeah. a.m., I think in New Zealand. Now, that's fine. That's kind of convenient because it's a weekend and it's also kind of inconvenient because it's a weekend because at least when the 60th anniversary happened, and I'm only talking for people living in Aotearoa, yeah. I'm not talking about people in Sydney or people in Melbourne or whatever uh, in, in Australia because they're, they're getting it like 7 p.m., I think, or 7 a.m. I can't okay. remember. I think it might be in the a.m. It makes sense in the a.m. When the 60th happened, I was getting up at sort of like six or seven o'clock in the morning to go downstairs and watch it over breakfast, early doors. Yeah. At least then I had the whole of the rest of the day yeah. to myself. But actually having it slap bang in the middle of the day, you know, by 11 or 12, I'm out and enjoying my Saturday or my weekend yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like the idea of having to stay in up until that point, yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm benefiting from this massively, but it's also annoying. You know, yes. that's the level of pedantry we've got to on this podcast. <laughs> um, I can understand why people are frustrated, but genuinely, being over here has given me a whole nother level of appreciation for what international Doctor Who fans have to go through. Yeah. Because this is a mild inconvenience mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of what it's like being in Australasia, New Zealand, uh, Oceania, that whole region is really starved of not just Doctor Who, but a lot of programming made by the BBC that yeah. is coming out five, six years legally in you know in, in a legal sense of watching yeah. it after it's been broadcast. So it's an inconvenience for the British audiences, but it's been funny looking at the reaction from over here because it does just seem like a lot of whinging and moaning, and I understand it. But yeah. I mean, From the outside looking in, it's it's kind of silly. You reckon? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, I mean, I've seen a few people be like, "Oh, well, you know, it is better for the international audiences." But you know, it's our program at the end of the day, and our and our license. Get your hands off our <laughs> our, our license fee <laughs> pays for it, and I want to be able to watch it at a decent time. Actually, our license fee yeah. pays for only a bit of it now because you know our Disney well, masters. This is the other thing. Pay, pay I mean. For it. I, I saw people saying, the "Devil." I say, well, I, I say, people. I think it might have been you actually messaging me <laughs> saying, "If this is what you know, if this is what Disney is doing, I, I, I don't want them involved anymore." Oh, I didn't. I, I don't I, think I, I said that. I no, that, that, fine, that might it not was some me. other grumpy arsehole. Um, <laughs> but it was, <laughs> it was somebody saying, "If this is, if this is what Disney, it being tied to Disney means." this is what's going to happen to my TV show, then I'd rather we just didn't have this relationship at all. Yeah. And that is just like, get some mother-loving perspective, bro. Yeah. Like, honestly, I understand. But also at the same time, it, it does, it, 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 maybe it's just being removed from it. I'd probably be as ab upset as you are if I was over there. Um, I guess that's it, isn't it? Because it's... Yeah, I bet, I, yeah. if you were here, you were probably thinking, oh, God, do I have to stay up till midnight to watch it so it doesn't get spoiled? For but me we could have had a sesh. sesh. We could have had a sesh at the Landogger, gone back to the studio, watched <laughs> it on the big TV together and had a lock-in until two o'clock in the morning, going <laughs> <Yeah>. live. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> well, mate, that might have been the best way to watch it. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Um, it might be bad watching it sober. You, you said in the last episode when we were with Johnny that your yeah. expectation or excitement levels were at an all-time low coming yeah. off the back of the Christmas special yeah. and leading into this first episode. Yeah. With this news on top of it, I imagine that you're not feeling any better. <laughs> no, it was like they just kicked me in the bollocks <laughs> again. They were just like, ah, oh, not, not looking forward to it. Well, guess what? You're not going to look well, forward to it. We know it's all that. because of like you and us talking about this, that they've done it. Yeah. So they were just waiting to kick yeah, you while you were, were down. Yeah, His car's like, oh. broken down. He's not very well. <laughs> yeah. All sorts of shit's Me going on. Died. He's waiting. Oh, my yeah. <laughs> it's just on top of it. On top of it. And now this. God dear. Um, yeah. I mean, well, apparently there's supposed to be a trailer dropping this Friday. Disney Plus yeah. is supposed to be dropping a trailer. Um, 22nd so, of March. So I wonder yeah. if that will be a sort of Disney exclusive, like, teaser for the whole season. Maybe. Or if it's going to be for the premiere double episode yeah. bonanza. Um, yeah. So what 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 day is it airing? What what day? Well, I'll say what day is it airing? Twenty second of March. Which uh, I'm not no, sure sorry. Which so the, the, so it's, it's the eleventh of May. That, oh um, yes, yes. Uh, it, it goes out now. I got to say, however, they have been listening to us, the BBC and Disney, <laughs> because. Obviously, one of the things I was worried about with them releasing it in May was that um, that Doctor Who would be on while I was on holiday in Brazil and I would have to try ah. and record the review of death. But because they've done the double episode at the start, it means it just finishes before we go to, go to Brazil. So it actually has helped. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts. <laughs> People are watching. We've got our people on the yeah, inside. They're like, oh, you know. And now they're thinking, oh, now he's bloody moaning about this. Can't win. Yeah. Well, that is it with Doctor Who fans, though. You literally yeah. can't fucking win. No. Um, here, here is a, sh- a, a, a system that allows us to reach Doctor Who to reach m- more people than ever before. Yeah. Secures financially the show at a time where the BBC is getting asset stripped like a fucking football club by the yeah. Conservative government. At a time where media around the world is in the toilet, and we have partnered up with a broadcaster, with a with a a business that knows how to do this shit like nobody else, and people are still moaning. Yeah, but that's hey, what that's, you that's, get that's, for that's investing that's, in that's Doctor our, Who, Disney. Yeah, that's our problem. You thought that Star Wars fans were a fucking nightmare. You yeah. ain't seen nothing yet, They're bro. All, we're all the same. We're all cut from the we're same the cloth. Same. Um, um, yeah, was that I mean, everything it, with regards to that announcement? I think so. I think that's it. Uh, I guess, you know, stay tuned, faithful listeners slash viewers yes. for our breakdown of the trailer. If it is like a, mm. if it's a, if it's a proper trailer, you know, if it's just like a little teaser, then we probably just yeah. tack it on the front of a normal episode. But um, Yeah, it might just be recut from stuff we've seen already. But it might just be recut. Know, yeah. If it's longer than... What are we going to, our cutoff point is 55, 60 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> then maybe we do a, a proper trailer chat. But, yeah. Um, or maybe yeah, we stick it, it on the Patreon or something. Yeah, we'll, we'll do something. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to take some getting used to. Initial thoughts are, the timing is, an, the timing is ugh, a, a frustrating. It's, but it's the episode, the back-to-back episode. It just feels like we're going to, we're losing a bit of the excitement for this. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh. I don't know. This is I like mean, this is how, this is exactly the conversation that people were having in the eighties when it moved to twice weekly. I know. I, I mean, yeah, and that's insane. No, why did they do and that? It, and it, 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 you know, yes, that was kind of where, you know, Doctor Who yeah. started to decline in quality. But it's because they didn't have money. It wasn't because of the twice weekly thing. <laughs> it was because they didn't have money, and the BBC despised it. So we're in a good position because now they yeah. do have money, and hopefully Disney doesn't watch this and think. Oh, look at these wankers. It's cut our losses is, is now. This, yeah, this is what they're like, is it? Um, we want nothing to do with them. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess we'll, for us, we're going to have to try and work out when to record. Yeah, these. and how to do all of that. But we'll we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll get work it all it out. Um, um, nailed down. But uh, it's going to be interesting watching Doctor Who blurry-eyed over a cup of tea and a slice of toast first thing in the morning. I loved and, it. I think you'll love it as well. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I get up and watch stuff. 
and like that. Anyway, I mean, the, I can't moan at, at, at Disney too much because this Wednesday, so, but well, Wednesday just gone by the time this goes out, the new series of X-Men comes out. And oh. as far as I'm concerned, forget Doctor Who. That is what I'm excited for this year. I pff, Doctor Who, what? X-Men. That's what I've got them here on my desk. I'm so excited that they are, you know, to, to bring back something from my childhood like that. Ah, feckin' excellent. What a sad cunt. Right, <laughs> uh, it is time to talk about an episode of Doctor Who from 2005 before we'd heard of Disney yeah. Plus, before we'd heard of streaming services. Um, and um, I was going to say just before, but actually just about when the rot set in for one Christopher uh, Eccleston. Um, on his this, first day of filming. I know, isn't it terrible? We'll, we'll get to it. Um, we're talking about the first ever two-parter in 21st century Doctor mm. Who, uh, the Aliens of London and World War Three. Yeah. Um, which I was really excited to talk about because it... I Watching it again recently, you know that kind of muscle memory you have for stuff that you've watched yeah. millions of times? Yeah. And I always view New Doctor Who as something that I was kind of passively watching behind this sort of veneer of criticism and like, yeah, yeah. oh, it's not as good as it used to be. Oh, yeah. bloody Clara who, uh, you know, all that sort <laughs> of stuff. But I actually need to remember there was a time where there was new Doctor Who on the TV mm. and I was utterly infatuated with it because I yeah. was nine, eight, nine years old mm. and it, it hit me at the right time just like most other children in the country. Yeah. And when we dip back into series one, especially, and occasionally series three, I get, and I, I got it at a specific moment at the end of this two-parter. An erection. Genuine. What? <laughs> An erection. <laughs> Je- it was in that big run down that corridor. <laughs> no, no, no. And Billy Piper's playing a 19-year-old, so that would be wrong. It was it was genuine chills watching right. it again because I could even beat the beat with the music and the dialogue and the way people hit their marks mm. and the way it was paced. I knew this fucking episode at like the back wow, of my hand. Wow, really? Impressive. Oh my God. I must were, have had this were, DVD You were timing your farts in time with the Slovene. When if I had a curry up, last night and I've got to be honest, Stella has asked me to, just to check my zip <laughs> to see if I'm... <laughs> broken off the done. engagement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, uh, I can't live with chemical <laughs> warfare for the rest of my life. Talking of massive <laughs> weapons of destruction, I have a lung full of this. Um, so, I, I, and, and also, I was excited to go back to it because it was the first episode th- where I think a lot of people who were kind of classic Who purists, I, mm. I, I kind of remember at the time, when this is what I was worried it was going to be like. I was looking at Matthew <laughs> Doppler. Um, this is what I was worried it was going to be like. CBBC mm. jokes, farting aliens, nobody's taking it seriously, uh, faux political satire, um, you know, cod political commentary. Uh, and so I was a little bit worried that going back to it, I would revert to that kind of way of thinking. Yeah. But... I absolutely didn't, and I absolutely loved it. Wow, okay. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, so obviously, yeah, we, we've got very similar experiences for, like, the nostalgia of this era, uh, like you said. I mean, obviously, being a bit older than you, uh, I, I sort you, of you had, you had a couple more years to let the grump set in. Yeah, the grump set in a bit earlier for me. Um, but, uh, or, aka, you know, if we're being... You know, not being coy about it. He went through puberty before I did, so everything yes, was shit yeah. for, a, for a certain period of time. My, my hormones just went <laughs> for everything. Um, became Father Jack. I became Father Jack, and I've not left. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I, I I do share that, but I do remember with this episode, uh, going back to what you were saying about the classic Doctor Who purist. This was the first episode. Obviously, it was episode four of that series. We've had. Rose was great. End of the world's fine. Um, Unquiet Dead is really, really good. And then we get to this one. And I remember 
as soon as all the flatulence happens, thinking, uh oh, this isn't, oh, hang on, what are they doing? Um, and this was the first sort of time new Doctor Who made me go, ooh, because I know that there was a lot of criticism about like the burping bin in Rose. That doesn't bother me. That's fine. That's just, that's just silly, silly laughs. But it was this, this was the thing that made me sort of go, oh, hang on. This is a bit, this is a bit much. Um, mm. And watching it back, you know, I, I guess the thing is I'm used to it now because I've watched this story countless times. Um, I can see him fucking laughing here. Thinking, like, what's you didn't, I don't think, I don't think Zoom caught my burps. <laughs> Oh, fine. Okay. He's a bloody Slovene. Fucking you hell. literally just plowed through it and it's made me laugh. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's the, the farting, it doesn't bother me as much as it did, I think, first time round. Bits of it st- still are a bit like Tony Lee sort of thing. Oh, the sh- mm. oh I, I'm shaking my booty bit. Is like, oh, are we, we getting into the realms of maybe possibly too silly here? Um, because tonally, this story is quite, I don't want to say all over the yeah. place, but it is a little bit, isn't it? Because at times it can be quite serious and quite earnest. Um, and then, of course, it can be quite daft and quite silly when you're chasing, you know, stuffed pigs and um, farting monsters. Uh, mm. And I guess, you know, it speaks for itself that the Slovene ended up being relegated as a Sarah Jane Adventures monster. They sort of very much yeah. went, this is sort of, this is more of a CBBC It's a shame creature. that because like visually as a villain, They're going good. back to the old rod adage of an episode's only as good as his baddie, they are great. And yeah, I love yeah, yeah. the fact that they're a, like a mafioso family business Yeah, yeah. and they're just in it for the money. Yep. And Actually, even the conversation the Doctor has before he seals the cabinet room mm. with the three of them, yeah, because there's only three props, and that's yeah. very obvious. And it was like, okay, classic Doctor Who lives and breathes <laughs> yeah. in the 21st century, um, and with a couple of other things as well, which we'll get onto. Yeah, but the fact that he can actually converse with them, and there is obviously that imminent danger of they're just gonna lunge towards him, and yeah. you know. Um, glove his body from his skeleton yeah um th- there's still an aspect of you know with like all good villains could you actually parlay with them you might not mm. be able to talk your way out of a situation yeah but it's more interesting than just being grunted at by an ogron or you know delete stomp stomp like a cyberman or whatever yeah and the fact that they do have a little bit of i was going to say a little bit of raz to them but that's totally not the right word <laughs> they've got a little bit of something you know they converse and they yeah, kind of yeah. have a bit of patter and banter with each other yeah and they're a family and all of that does make it believable but it does also i think kneecap them as a genuine threat mm. which is why they're they're not brought back in the main series but i think it's a massive shame they haven't and i yeah, think especially now in the ultra consumerist, ultra capitalist society we live in, not that it wasn't like that then, no. but even like now, there are yeah. so many, you know, they could get into fucking crypto. And yes. they could, <laughs> you know, they could be selling off all sorts of things. Yeah. And, and they'd be great to bring back. I, I, I'm surprised even that it, for like cameo slots, like yeah. when the 13th Doctor was locked up in that prison in, in, on Sharda, like, why didn't they yeah. appear in occasion in the corner? Maybe the latex monster. I was just going to say, I think they've bits. probably disintegrated. <laughs> I, I, isn't there a photo that goes around every now and again of yeah. one of the animatronic heads that's just fallen to bits? And it's just like a skull. It's quite horrifying. Yeah. yeah. Sad. Um, but they're great. they are great. And, you know, a cool, practical monster, slightly impractical in places. You know, you do get the yeah. sense that the the performers are really battling against the suit to try and get yes. movement out of it. Um, but, you know, when they're just sort of standing still or talking, you know, I think it works fine. Um, it's great when you have those CGI shots of, you know, the Doctor and co being chased and then they like burst through the door and they're all sort of hunched over and there's a real animalistic sense to them. That obviously you can't get But then get you from- cut to the live and then- prop and the head's going... And Stell saw it and went, oh, they're quite cute, aren't they? And I was yeah. like, yeah, they've got fucking baby faces. What is it yeah. about, you know? But also, I mean... 
that thing I was talking about before about kind of classic Doctor Who. Mm. There's a daftness in that, like you say. There's a kind of a weird roller coaster of we're taking this ultra seriously because we're trying to say something, you know, make some kind of comment about yeah. Blair and uh, weapons of mass destruction and all that sort of stuff. And apparently, it was actually supposed to be canonically Tony Blair that was that fell out of that cupboard. Oh, but cool. the lookalike okay. turned up on the day and they went, he looks nothing like Tony Blair. Wow. And so they didn't shoot his face. That's apparently what went down. Amazing. But, um, where all that running up and down corridors, the CG looks good in, in the moments where they're able to light it kind of in the dark. Yeah. But then obviously you cut and, and then it's a rubber monster running down a corridor and you're like, this is fucking Doctor Who. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. But th- I don't know. It's almost like they sh- should have known that was going to be the thing so that they could maybe have cut some of the booty shaking and the farting out. Yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. oh, people are going to laugh at it anyway, because of the way that it comes across on screen because of the yeah. props. Yeah. And you could almost get comedy out of that without having to, if you cut half the sharting out, you know, yeah. <laughs> very much so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's very much, it feels very much like, right. Where Dr. Who trying to find its feet. Yes. This story. Like, where do we gauge Definitely. this for a, a modern audience? Um, but I mean, I remember at the time, like, especially the beginning and all of the domestic stuff. I mean, we always say mm. how well mm. Russell does the domestic stuff. Um, yeah. This is what and, I think of when we talk about the domestic soap opera stuff. Yeah. It's, it's the stuff from this story that I think of. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, it's. The, and you think of the domesticity in this one, which feels so real. Whereas, I, you know, the Christmas special one, um, although obviously very real in its own way, f- felt a bit more sort of cuddly and a bit more twee. But this mm. f- has that real sort of kitchen sink drama of, you know, Rose has gone missing, you know, which I thought was so clever at the time. Um, I know they they do the same sort of thing in survival. Um, you know, the, the, the Sergeant Patterson says something like, oh, um, you know, or your mum had you listed as a missing person. But it's a throwaway line. You know, it's yeah. not really, uh, and I think as a kid that just went over my head. But then to see mm. it here, and you see the missing posters, and you see his her mum's reaction, that shock, um, mm. it's so well done. It's brilliant. It's very, very clever. Uh, and uh, the first time that that's ever been examined yeah. in Doctor Who, that kind of what is it like when you actually leave Earth? And yes. they almost they almost cap it at at that being the yeah. most dramatic form of a companion coming back from their travels because yeah. you know by the time we get to clara she is taking sabbaticals from work to pop yeah. out every now and again and have a quick couple of journeys but then yeah. she's always remembering to come back and no feet on the ground i've got a job to do i've got to be an au pair for this very rich family or whatever yeah, it is yeah. their job is did you notice the dirty old fecker that's got his arms all over rose when they're sat in the front room watching the telly no. It's like this old bloke who's like sat with her and he's just, there's just something about that image of this 19 year old. I mean, maybe they know each other really well, but mm. I don't know. There was a bit of a dirty old fecker vibe coming from. Interesting. That, that scene. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, okay. I'll, I'll have a look at that. I'm, I'm interested. There's another bit that always makes me go, uh, which is. I know which bit you're going to say. Is it the when Rose and the Doctor are on the rooftop? Yeah, uh, yeah. After after the Doctor's been slapped, um, yes, and she says it was so gay. I'm with. I thought, oh, that oh. Bit, I thought you were going to say because she was wearing Velcro trainers. Was she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, yeah. That bit is like obviously very at odd. the time, you know probably didn't think anything of yeah. it but now you yeah. sort of think ooh you know ooh can't say can't say that um, it's so interesting how how it's changed so much that that was just like a yeah like you didn't just, think about it it's kind of school school playground it, levels very much of, so yeah 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 and you just like threw you it around it now you? and you're like well you just don't you, of course you don't you, say no, that no you know it's very very strange how how, how far away this was, but it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be 20 years old next year. Whoa. 20 years. God, it's crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. Does it make you feel old? God, I can reevaluate my fucking life. Yeah. What are we um, doing? Sat here chatting about this old crap. 
I, I thought I'd be a millionaire by now. Um, uh, yeah, so that that all that stuff is great around the Powell estate, and I, I, yeah. I really like the way all of that is shot because it feels real as well. And yeah, um, there's a thing in this episode I've got about the lighting, um, but maybe it's just a symptom of television from that era. I think it might be because it you know put me in the mind of a lot of Torchwood, not just mm. because Tosh is in yeah, this she for a substantial amount of the first part. Yeah. But um, th- the lighting in it, I think, is sometimes either too dark, like especially in number 10, where you've got a lot of noise on the screen. The pitch yes. is really noisy. Yeah. And then you've also got that really, really harsh gel lighting, like in the mortuary, yeah. where everything is fucking blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the colour for monsters for Doctor Who was blue. Like the yeah, Cybermen it was, wasn't had it? Their- their yes. blue mouth slits. Yeah, the Daleks yeah. had their blue eyes. The Slovenes yeah. have their blue lights. Blue z- and yeah. Whoever's fucking queuing that light, by the way, is always early. When they start unzipping oh, yeah, their foreheads, yeah. it always starts strobing yeah. just like, like half a second too early. It's like, he hasn't opened his head yet. Come on. <laughs> no. And then Stell would watch it and go, why, are, why have all the other lights gone out all of a sudden? It is it true, so- isn't it? All the lamps and all yeah. the light shades just go completely dark. It- and then you get this blue flashing. Yeah, um, but it looks let's good. Let's talk about the it, yes, it does, it does, yeah. and of course, it's a classic Doctor Who thing of you know cozy domesticity being yeah. broken by something familiar, something that we encounter every day in our life, becoming frightening, which of yeah. course are fatties. So <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Let but let's talk about that. Did you think? That was a bit uncouth now as well. Like, you wouldn't do that oh, now. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't do that now. You wouldn't do that now. Not at all. And rightly so. And rightly so, yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't know. Again, I f- it feels like it plays into this whole sort of CBBC thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That sort of, like, childhood... Well, it's like, I don't know. you know, any, any <laughs> adult you have in your life who's... <laughs> <laughs> any adult you have in your life who might be i'm trying to the, I, we're going to use language that we shouldn't be but, but portly heavy yeah. set heavy big bones set. anyone in your life as a kid who's like that who's in a position of authority like a teacher yeah. or whatever they are now the object of ridicule because they're well they might be a slovene i think that's why yeah. they've done it you yeah. know yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah. Because they're all in positions of power and they're all, mm. and, and, and maybe is it like a kind of political caricature thing? These kind of sweaty gammons sort of yeah. running the country. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, even more prevalent, you know, later on when you get bloody um, Boris Johnson running the country, you know, he was a perfect candidate for being a, a Slovene. <laughs> I mean, it, that's the only thing that makes sense. Is yeah. that he is a monster in a skin suit. I mean, he yeah. is a monster yeah. in a skin suit. That's why um, he can't brush his hair properly. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's always got to keep it down all the time. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, my God. Cover days, that zipper. Done it. Um, what about Trump? Trump has the same thing. Trump's um, got the same thing. That's That mad comb over is covering up a zip. It just it makes he, sense. He literally is like, you know, Trump fell thotch. Like, yeah. he is all Trump about what they're, fotch, what they're all about, you know? <laughs> He's trumping all right. He's trumping all over the place. He's trumping all the time. Um, <laughs> Victory needs to be naked. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we have all the stuff in the mortuary, which is quite quite good. It's very atmospheric. It? It's great. And, you know, there's some really nice... I mean, say what you want about Keith Boak and everything that happened in his stories that he directed, but he does some atmospheric oh, yeah. stuff, uh, you know, especially the, the scene where... The first time the Slovene is unmasked and Harriet Jones is hiding in the cupboard watching it, you know yeah. that's a that's shot very well. That's shot like a a proper horror film. It's great. And the stuff where, um, yeah, obviously the 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 I, I'm not going to say Keith Boak is aware of the TV movie, but I yeah. can't imagine that it didn't cross Russell's mind. The staging of that whole scene mm. is just like Paul McGann coming out of the mortuary. Yes. Yeah, it is isn't in it? the TV yeah, movie. Yeah. Um, I uh, I really liked all that stuff, and having seen Christopher Eccleston in Auckland uh, about a month ago now, yeah. he was talking about turning up on his first day and being like, "Right, 
I'm chasing a space pig yeah. up a corridor in the middle of a, like a disused hospital in Wales. This is now my life. But he basically kind of went, it didn't get off to the greatest of starts because of that. Right. And obviously, subsequently, we've learned this is the block where he had a major falling out with the higher ups. Yeah. Exactly who that is, exactly why, we don't know. And it's not for us to speculate on. That's mm. not what we're talking about. But it is quite interesting watching all those sequences back yeah. now. Because as great a performer as Chris is, I do see a bit of a bit a bit like the kind of unbalance of comedy and mm. and terror in this. I see a little bit of he's struggling to find where where to pitch to it. nail this character on. Yeah. Um what did you think about Chris's performance in this and Chris in general in this story? Yeah, I think I, I agree. There are moments where you can tell he's like, oh, the lighter moments, maybe he pitches it a bit to, I don't want to say pantomime but there's a, there's an element of broad. that. that Yeah, it's a bit broad, but yeah. Um, and then, you know, as soon as he has to get into the more serious territory, you know, he can sort of grab that with both hands and he's like, oh, you know, this really is, comes alive there. Yeah. Doesn't he? You know, this is this is safe. Um, but, you know, it's stuff like the one that always bothered me um, was on the roof. You know, you have that sequence. They're on the roof and then the spaceship flies over and he does that laugh and that laugh never feels natural. It's like, you know. I don't know if Echo still is just like I don't I don't know where to get that laugh from <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> I don't yeah. know that sort of joy in my life <laughs> especially at the moment <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah but then but then you 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 flip that and the scene where the pig gets shot yeah and he has a go at that poli- that that um a police officer or, or soldier a soldier isn't it yeah is so good yeah and it, it, it's in contrast to most of the rest of this story like all the stuff in the mortuary is creepy and i remember being really scared of the mm. build up to that when i was a kid yeah. and then even even the pig is frightening because yeah. pig squeals aren't pleasant no pigs don't look especially nice and it's weird and when he talks yeah. about the whole mermaid stitching together thing yeah it's weird and it's macabre and it's dark and the fact that yeah they sent the pig into a tailspin they kamikaze yeah. it into london yeah and it didn't know what was going on and how disgusted he is not just by that scene with the police officer but how disgusted he is that somebody would do that to a the ethical aspect of it you yeah know? yeah yeah that that i does feel like real chris that does feel yes. like something he would righteously get annoyed about and rightly yeah, get yeah. annoyed about and yeah. i think that's where this ninth doctor lives for me because you get oh, all very that stuff so. obviously, obviously in Dalek where he's having that real tussle with it and and yeah. all of that when he's got something to kick up against and to get his back up about that's where he sort of shines and and Definitely. they're few and far between in this story but when it happens it's really amazing yeah I mean uh, a- another prime example of that in this story is that exchange with him and Margaret Slavine when, mm. um, it, you know, they're locked in the cabinet room and he opens the door and he talks to her um, and they have that back and forth and he goes so steely faced and she sort of says, oh, who's going to stop us? You trapped in your box. And he just says, yes, me. And he's so steely faced and he really stares her down. And there's that wonderful moment where she's laughing at him and then she yeah. stops and the the... There's that little bit of doubt in her eyes where she's like, oh, hang on a minute. This guy's, mm. he's, he's, he's serious. Yeah, he's serious. And he's a bit shot away, I think. And I'm worried that you might actually do something about it. <laughs> he's a war veteran. He's just going to leap yeah. over the table and kill me with a Bic pen or something, you know? Yeah. Um, just chuck some vinegar on her face. <laughs> well, yeah. What did you think of that? Because that's a scene that happens a bit later. It's like, I I completely forgot that's how they dispense with the, with the, uh, Slavine. I knew it exploded for some reason in the kitchen, yeah. but I can't remember what it led to. It feels like a bit of a. Oh, I don't. I don't a, you know, I don't mind I don't that. Know. I don't mind the the vinegar um, solution. I think it's quite fun, and I obviously, it, you know, you get a monster blow up, and there's a lot of slime and gunk. That's always good fun, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I I don't mind that. I I like that stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, well, 
talking of the direction a little bit more because we, yes. you know we don't want to bath bash Keith Bowick for things we don't know what happened except yeah. for a, a flaming sofa. Yeah. Um, the TV stuff, the broadcast. Yeah. Oh yeah. Stuff is exceptionally done. Yeah. And I I love the way that the alien invasion is covered because it does feel real and it does tie into that domestic setting that we were talking about and yeah you know nobody does that anymore pearl around the neighbor's house to watch the telly no. uh, to see what's going on on the news no um I, I, and and away from that also the way that the rest of the power of state reacts with the big signs people having raves yeah. in their yeah. flat you know it, it does feel very very of the moment but i, I love I, the news I, coverage i love the channel hopping and the blue peter stuff and yeah all it's that. great very, very clever and like getting Andrew Marr to do it as well. Really you know, good, give, yeah. Gives yeah. it that little extra level of authenticity. Um, it's funny what you were saying then about uh, like the, all the parties and stuff on the Power of the State. I have very strong memories of seeing the behind the scenes photos of this leaking, you know, ah, uh, yeah. in, into the leader yeah. and seeing those pictures of the Power of the State with or L-O-E-T and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. You know, and speculating like, what what does it all mean? You know, and like the first pictures of, you know, Eccleston in his costume with the, with the TARDIS behind him and, uh, you know, the bad wolf graffitied on the TARDIS yeah. and thinking, what's that all about? You know, what bastards gone and written on the TARDIS? <laughs> well, you were mainly worried about the size of the windows. I was I mainly worried the about the photo, but yeah. 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 Um, and, and also the way that all that TV stuff sort of comes back around and feeds into the narrative with the alien hotline, because yes. obviously, Jackie is a very, very important part of the story and her relationship yeah. with the Doctor and Rose and um, the fact that Rose has been missing for 12 months and now suddenly she's back in her life and it's all gone upside down and there's this strange bloke who she doesn't trust and yeah. that all feels very real. But one of the things that really sold um, uh, all of that and Camille Kajuri's performance in it was when she's alone in her room and she looks at the TV screen with the hotline on it. Yeah. And... She grabs the phone and it's a watching it again now. It was like a bit of a, oh, Jackie, don't kind of moment, you know, like yeah. don't dob him in because at that point you, you don't know that they're not going to suddenly lock him up. And yes, because yeah, she's yeah, doing yeah. it to, do, to, to to get him in trouble, you know, to yeah, get yeah, him yeah. away from her daughter. And yeah. I, I love the way that that's done because it, it plays into the established, you know, way they're telling the story through the TV broadcasts, but it yeah. actually gives somebody a reason to keep staying engaged in the story, you know? Yeah. Oh, very much so. You know, and, and it's very real, isn't it? You know, it's a very, you know, parental thing. You know, if you, if you thought something like that was going on, that your daughter was in danger and, you know, yeah. you, you, you probably would, wouldn't you? Um, mm. So, but again, you know, that plays into a whole other host of things of, you know, fears of you know like oh, who are our neighbors and you know dobbing mm. like you said dobbing people up and you know w cold war stuff you know there's mm. there's a lot it draws on a lot of sort of those fears and worries yeah. um but what i like is the way that when you get into that whole stuff about all oh, the doctor buffalo and all that kind of stuff when they're when they're not not that bit when they're searching but that first bit when she's on the phone and they start putting in the information and the alarms go off you know it's uh, obviously for a modern audience it's good because it it does bring across this sense that the doctor has a history you know obviously yes. for us as long-time viewers we see it and we're like oh yeah well we know we know that history uh but it does a good job of painting that picture of saying like yes you know he has he has been here before you know and, and it's there an is extension of all the stuff with clive from the first episode yes. and yeah mickey's still following the trail and yeah i, I, I do like because the doctor is a pacifist you can't see the doctor be dangerous but having all the stuff about he leaves uh you know you, you when you search the doctor it's his face and then a list of the dead next to it yeah yeah and all of that and towards the we're skipping towards the end of the episode but um the stuff with uh rose deciding to leave and yeah. packing her bag i love that last scene where they're waiting there and Jackie is told by Rose, I'll be back in 10 seconds. But for me, it could have been months or years yeah. or whatever. And then Jackie's counting down 10 seconds and she hasn't come back and she leaves. Yeah. That even then they're sowing the seeds that, you know, Rose isn't going to make it back home. Nah, and that yeah. there's something that might happen. 
And yeah. it's just that little drip feeds of that. And like I said before, of Clive and, and the research on the Doctor, that he is dangerous, but he himself is not dangerous. And yeah. for a modern audience who's used to action stars and people getting blown away by heroes and things, yeah. it's probably just enough to kind of, you know, I don't know, satisfy that bloodlust out of an action hero. Yeah. yeah. But and I mean- not have them pull the trigger. Yes, and I mean, you know, it comes up earlier on as well, isn't it? Um, when they're locked in the cabinet room, Jackie's on the phone to him and she says, you know, this life of yours, you know, will my daughter be safe? And he can't he can't answer it because he knows deep down that, well, anything could happen. Um, mm. You know, and he knows firsthand that not everyone that he travels with gets out alive. Sorry, Adri. Um yeah, it, it's great. It's it, it does a very good job of broadening the world that Russell is creating in that, mm. that or had created in that first episode, um, and it just really su- just cements those relationships and stuff. Um, yeah, very very well done. Um, and I, I and it came at the right sort of point in the series as well. You know, you've you've yes. done your introduction, you've done your story in the future, you've done your story in the past. Right, let's go back now and see how all of that has affected those left behind and, you know, what happens when the aliens come to us sort of thing. Uh, and it's, it's just such a, very- a beautifully structured season. And I, I can kind of picture Russell going for the same template with this yeah. new run with Shooty and Millie yeah. of, like, modern day story, forwards, backwards, and then we get into, right, here's the show now. I can, yes. I can imagine it being pitched like yeah. that. And I think probably, that's probably not far off, is it really? Because I think the first episode's on a spaceship in the future. Yeah. The second episode is in the past with the Beatles. And then I imagine, yeah, you would probably go back to modern day because we know there's stuff going on uh, with giant slugs and all that sort of stuff. So um, Unit and all that, yeah. And Unit and all that. And, you know, obviously Unit get a little mention in this mm. story as well. Um, it, you know, and it's a, it's a shame that it's not a little bit more, but it's nice that they get their, their little... Time to not really time to shine, but they get that little, little nod. Yeah. Um, there's a, the, the lady in this. I was supposed to look this up before we recorded, but the lady, the unit lady, is actually from Doctor Who magazine comic strips. Right. Apparently so. That, wow. Yeah. That's a deep so cut. that is a deep cut, but apparently she is a character from Doctor Who magazine. Wow. I was yeah. just about to say when you talk about unit and the you know the slight mentions of them, it does and and that's in what you just told me there is a massive contrast to what I was going to say because yeah. there is that feeling in the early seasons of Doctor Who, the early seasons of the revival, yeah. that Russell is desperately trying to separate this from old Doctor Who that got cancelled. You know the yeah. kind of the old crap wobbly set Doctor Who, yeah. and so when units mentioned, it's very passing. There's no sort yes. of, I suppose, way of a, a, a classic series fan misunderstanding or, or thinking, are they going to be a massive part of this going forward? It's kind of throwaway, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I used to work for them way back when or whatever. Yeah. But even to the point that when the Doctor says, and this is so in contrast to what we have these days, and especially with fucking Power of the Doctor and the unit yeah. support group and all that, the yeah. fact that he's there and... Um, I think Harriet says when she finds out Rose has got a phone that can call outside the cabinet room, she's like, well, why don't you call one of your friends to help? And he's like, yeah. no, they're all dead downstairs. And it's yeah. like, we're not that far off from fucking Sarah Jane Adventures starting and no. Torchwood and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Who's world is very, very small and it's obviously being done on purpose. Yeah. But it's kind of shocking when you see how far in the other direction it's gone now, especially with it, yeah. the revival and, yeah. and the, the re-revival and the 60th being so continuity heavy and so yeah. reliant, leaning on these characters coming back. It's kind of yeah. shocking. It's weird, isn't it? It really has done a total 360 or 180 or it's, it's turned around. <laughs> it might be like that, a massive reset when we come back and it's just yeah. a sort of need to know basis. Yeah. Here's Melanie Bush. Yeah, I travelled with her before, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. But, um, you know, even that is kind of like so not what the original revival was going for. Yeah. And, and that, I think that's what I anticipated this being, uh, the, mm. the, the new the new revival, was that it was going to be more like this, more like series one and, you know, really starting f- from scratch almost. Uh, but yeah, it is very interesting to see how it hasn't done that. 
Mm. Um, maybe he, it's just because they thought, well, it's more in the public consciousness still. Maybe there's still that slight hum within people's minds of Doctor Who and some of these characters. Whereas, you know, back well, in 2005. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, there, that was not the case. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you're right. I mean, you say that, but you talk to the kids at, you know, my brother's school or Annie's school, and a lot of them don't know Doctor Who at all. So it's, it will I mean, be so interesting to see how that changes in the next yeah. like couple of months. Because yeah. if, if it does, because that is the measure of success. I mean, like, mm. yeah, f- I, I suppose from our perspective anyway, that kids who hadn't heard of it or didn't care about it are now suddenly interested. Yeah. But obviously for our new overlords and benefactors at the Mouse Factory, it's more about <laughs> how that happens outside of the UK. Yes, and it will be yeah. interesting to start getting feedback from people who live abroad who are suddenly like, my high school class, you know, came in from recess. I'm trying to think of American things. Um, <laughs> and one, once we did our shooting prevention day, they told me about how great Doctor Who was. Once they got out from under their tables, we talked about how, um, how great Doctor oh, Who was. It'll yeah. be really interesting to see if that yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. Um, are there any other little bits that... Um I've got a few bits. Scream out um, at you. Uh, oh, I do like that bit when the doctor arrives at the hospital and he opens the door and the soldiers are there. Yes. And they all point the guns at him and he just does that little smile. And then obviously yeah. Toshiko screams and then he takes control and he becomes the action Toshiko. hero. Yeah. <laughs> just call her Tosh. It's supposed I, to be Tosh, right? It is Tosh. Yeah. It is Tosh. Yeah. It is oh, Tosh. Right. Okay. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is her. Yeah. I'm not being racist. I love that. <laughs> <It's> her. <laughs> <laughs> just checking um, uh, and they bring it up they bring it up in Torchwood she's because it's supposed to be Owen Owen is supposed to be doing the autopsy because he's the the medical oh. officer and I think he's got a hangover and she covers for him so she she right. goes instead I believe that's the the retcon that they do later on in Torchwood um, it gets once mentioned once the heat dies down on a certain Jay Barrowman yeah. We should we should do, do Torchwood. Torchwood, yeah. Because I've been rewatching it with with Annie, um, yeah. and there's some good episodes. There's some good there's some good episodes there. Um, and it's a shame um, he's such a twat because he's he's good as Captain Jack, but he is a complete toss pot in true yeah. life. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love I love that bit with the Doctor, and then you get the bit of the theme come in, like yeah, the action yes. theme come in, yes. yeah. And it's not like it's not like diddly dumb. But it's that the little bit that Murray has added that da 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 because I guess he thinks fuck we're gonna get you know find through the ass if we use diddly dumb so yeah come up with some else. There was another music cue. I mean, it's it's funny listening to this and thinking how desperately Murray is constrained by these fucking MIDI files that he's having to use, and like yeah, he's you can hear the score wanting to be played by an orchestra. Yes, but yeah. it's kind of straining with the fact it's all samples. But um, I quite like that because it makes it more ethereal and makes it more alien. Uh, and there's yeah. a couple of sort of cymbal crashes and piano-y bits that I was like, that's fucking Dudley Simpson right there. Yeah, that's not yeah, Mary yeah. Gold. There's a few of those. But there's yeah. one bit in particular It feels very Doctor plays, Who. A very Doctor Who. And people will be able to tell me which bit it is or what it's called on the soundtrack. But it's the bit that plays when Joseph... Green, the Slovene MP, go uh, or the acting prime minister goes outside and does his address to the nation. Yes, and yeah, talks yeah. straight down the barrel. That musical score, which I, I I'm sure comes up a couple of times that yeah. season. Yeah, that was another moment where I got sort of tingles, and I was like, yeah. oh yeah, that's taking me right back to 2005 and yeah, subsequent yeah, yeah. years watching it on DVD over and over and over again. Um, yeah. So yeah, like we're not going to be overly snarky towards the director even though given you know what happened apparently yeah. during filming led to chris maybe piecing out somewhat but um there's a really really nice bit of direction when uh the the copper played mm. by steve spears when he comes into jackie's flat and yeah. he puts his coat and his hat down on the table and it's yeah. clearly supposed to be like a visual reference of it's a fucking skin suit and this guy is a Slovene, you know, like yeah. even if he wasn't portly, I love yeah. that that's the kind of cue for the kids to kind of go, oh no, yeah. it's it's one of them. Yeah, um, it's very clever. And all that stuff around the estate afterwards with the police officer because it's, it's, yeah. the, it's the lonely guy from extras playing 
<laughs> yes, for copper. That's yeah. the only thing I know him from is wanting to go for a curry. Yeah. Um, yeah, all of that stuff is 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 great, and <laughs> the way that all those cliffhangers converge, everyone's in the same problem at the same time, and then you get that kind of quick, easy solution, which is a bit like oh, a bit yeah. of a, a bit of a wet fart. But that's a great cliffhanger. That's yeah, you know, it's the first cliffhanger of modern Doctor Who. The yeah, first cliffhanger since Survival, and yeah. it's a really good one. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Like like you said, that the, the resolution to that cliffhanger is a bit like, oh, that it? And I think they mm. do it wrong as well because they they have the resolution before the title sequence. Mm. That he like, takes it off and says, all deadly to humans. And then he puts it on the Slovene, which for some reason, the electricity travels through every Slovene everywhere what yeah uh, well it doesn't make their any family, sense they're linked I don't know like yeah who knows yeah. Uh, that's you know, the bit that-, that feels like a kind of cop out yeah rushed, very much so know. and then and then the like the the opening cliffhanger the pre-titles cliffhanger is just a Slovene going <laughs> <laughs> electrocuted <laughs> and they're like no you shouldn't have done that you should have just had the, the cliffhanger for the episode starting still be Chris Eccleston in pain and mm. then have the resolution after the music. I don't know. That always, seems like a bit of a bo- botched me. Yeah. thing. You know, it's like the, it's like Keith Burke didn't know, oh, I've got to get the title sequence in there. Yeah. And he's just had to sort of fucking chisel it in. Yeah. You know? It's weird. Yeah. Um, it did, never never feels right. But uh, yeah, like you said, a, it's, a, it's a great cliffhanger. Uh, talking about the cast as well, David Very, I think it is, playing Joseph Green, the lead yeah. Slovene. Uh, do you recognise him from Red Dwarf? Seen Red Dwarf. He's one of the prisoners in the tank in one of the episodes of Red Dwarf. Big meat. He's oh, got like is, a he, is he an American mustache. guy? Is he an American yeah. guy? Yeah. Yes. I think isn't that cat keeps calling him fat or yeah. something in the queue and he beats him up. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. You know, series eight of Red Dwarf. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, and then there's that great scene as well in in part two it's a shame that we reverted to each story getting its own episode title but i suppose yeah was it a drama convention back then to not do I've part one pro- and two or? probably yeah i guess yeah. so um but i love the scene when harriet jones and rose run into one of the sort of side rooms and then get followed in by margaret slavine and then yes. all the others and yeah. she does all the kind of the longer that they hide the more scared they get and the smellier they Smell, are and yeah. all of that and so good and yeah um the the i don't know what is fell uh or fell fell fetch felch no um when he talks about harriet jones yes and uh an old know, bird or brittle bones and, and stale all that stuff perfume. yeah 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 and she sort of pulls a face doesn't she as if to say oh you cheeky bugger bitch. <laughs> um do you remember the unit website and logging in with the Buffalo yes, password? I, I, that's in my notes. Ah, oh, God, that was great, wasn't it? All that stuff was so good. But I mean, you know, websites as they are just don't really don't really exist in that way anymore. People just go on no, Twitter. tie-in and, websites and yeah, all that. It's just, yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? It feels like another world, but it was so good. You know, how many yeah. lessons of IT were spent trying to hack yeah. into the unit website and, you know, play all then those get, Doctor like, Who passing, Flash games. Because the BBC website was obviously a tool to aid your learning. So yes. all of the Flash games on there were able, you know, I was sending the links around to everybody in yeah. IT and going, yeah, you can play The Last Dalek. That, I mean, that so was good. the best. That was so that good. That was so good, The Last Dalek. Um, what do you think about the whole WMD thing? And the way that it's oh, the weapons of mass destruction. Yes, um, I mean, obviously, very topical at the time, given everything that was going on with Iraq and, like you said, with Tony Blair and George Bush and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't really have any strong feelings towards it in particular, but I, you know, if it 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 worked at the time, I guess you know, it was it was topical. Mm. I think it's um. It's not the most scintillating political commentary, but for any, you know, parents watching who were, were watching the news at the time, it's a little bit of a, huh, huh, okay. Yes. I see what we did there. But it doesn't yeah. sort of override everything and it doesn't become, no. you know, ultra politicised. Not that I no. don't like my Doctor Who to make commentaries, but um, 
even down to the fact that Tony Blair said, um, like Saddam can launch these things in 45 minutes. Yeah. And Joseph Green's out there saying they could launch these alien weapons in 45 seconds. Yeah. And I kind of feel like maybe Russell did write, write weapons of mass destruction. And then the BBC were like, I, I don't think we can go quite that far. And so he's had to do massive weapons of destruction. Yes. <laughs> in yes. the script, which is so, is so funny. I, and apparently as well, reading up for this, another thing that the BBC, well, the BBC definitely, apparently, interfered with this is having a scene where the kid wipes off the graffiti at the end of the episode. Oh, interesting. Why? As like a kind of standards and practices, like, no, he's got to be shown that he's learned his lesson not to graffiti and think that that's all right. We don't want kids going away from this thinking they can just tag anything they want. Oh, with I see. Wolf. Oh, right. Fair enough. You know? So he's uh, sort okay. of, he has to be shown to be taught a lesson. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, there we go. Don't graffiti police boxes, kids. Don't graffiti police boxes, kids. Uh, I wonder if that did happen. If anybody, Does anybody remember at the time going out in the wild and seeing bad wolf spray painted on shutters <laughs> outside <laughs> off licenses and stuff? Like, what a great guerrilla marketing campaign that would have been. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that the chalk ones, the bad wolf chalk uh, from... Oh, in the playground. Of, yeah. That Apparently that took years to go away. If It, it might so even cool. still be there. It might even still be there, but yeah. I Not think that we while. should encourage anybody to go around the estates that they filmed uh, the <laughs> yeah. estate location stuff on, because apparently they are rough as a cat's arsehole. So really? just be careful. Yeah, oh, apparently. Oh, careful okay. going around there. Um, rough as a cat's arsehole. They can spot the Doctor Who fans a mile away and think, hey, they're easy to mug, and they've got a dispend- disposable income if they're coming to yeah. Cardiff for the day. <laughs> yeah. Just going to spend it on plushies. Um, yeah. And then uh, I think that's pretty much it, really. I think I mean, so, isn't it, really? There's a couple of little moments, like them going into the PM's office and going, the telephone's actually red, and all oh, that all stuff, that was, stuff. Yeah. was quite exciting. Like, I was convinced as a kid that's what Downing Street looked like on the inside. Yes, yeah. Um, that stuff's all really nice. Yeah, yeah, you know, and the Doctor talking about, oh, you know, this was Swampland, and, you know, it was... Mm. It, Mr. Chicken and all that sort of stuff. He was a nice man. Just, just these little, little twinkly bits that are always nice to just uh, flesh out the the Doctor's character and you know his past, all that kind of stuff. Mm. It's good. Uh, and you do sort of think, oh, what Doctor was gonna was sitting in the in Parliament drinking whiskey? Probably John Pertwee. I was just about to say John. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah. <laughs> for He's sure. the only person that looks like he could sit on a Tory backbench and actually like blend in. Yeah, you know? I felt very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. and Eccleston when he drinks the wine, he spits the wine out. He does a he does a bit yeah. of a Matt Smith. He does a he he I mean maybe he just thinks it's shit wine, but um He might think <laughs> it is. I think it's is it not supposed to be brandy? Is it not supposed because it's in like oh, a, it is brandy, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah the brandy. Um yeah. maybe he just doesn't so like brandy. Spoken, spoken like a true alcoholic. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like. Sorry. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, we, haven't sp- <laughs> we haven't spoken about her at all, really. But obviously, Rose is here in it. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't really do anything. Um, no. But uh, I would have liked, in a kind of classic Doctor Who way, if he'd handed the brandy to her when Harriet says she doesn't want any, and yeah. gave it to Rose, and she tried to like neck a bit, and yeah. he's like, "No, don't do that. You know, have yeah, some yeah, lemonade yeah. over there or something." Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Um, I know you've got a doobie in your pocket for later, but, you know, let's worry about this right now, Rose. Um, yeah. Oh, dear. Well, well, yeah, I think I'm I'm sort of happy having yeah. parked it's, that it, as, it, like, a really enjoyable experience watching that story. Yeah, I mean, I remember it's never been one that I've been, like, enamoured with, but it's it's fine. It's good, you know. I don't... I'm, I'm not like, oh, dear, it's this episode. It's, it's just a... Mm. A, a good old romp, I think, and I yeah. think there's some good it, there's some good moments in there where it's really trying to do things, like we said, to broaden the the, the world of Doctor Who at that time, which is very clever. Um, and yeah, some nice direction in there, some great performances. Uh, obviously, Harriet Jones. We haven't really spoken about her, but obviously no, she yeah. went on to become uh, a big big part of it all. And also the first appearance of the news lady, whose name I forget. The American Trinity lady. Wells. Trinity Wells, well done. Um, you know, we first forgot to bring her up that she came back in the 60th as well. We forgot to bring her up. We forgot, we've, Billy, we forgot to mention all the people who have died 
in the past few months from Doctor Who that people will keep saying, you never mentioned this. We keep forgetting. You know, Richard Franklin passed away uh, at Christmas oh, yeah. Day and we missed that. Michael Jason passed away. My God, yeah. everyone's going. Everyone's going. It's terrible. Absolutely awful. Anyway, I don't know why I've put that in there as a little downer. <laughs> And on that note, <laughs> and on that note, uh, yeah. So it's it's good. It's good fun. Good fun story. Um, maybe some of the farting might be a bit, bit much in places. Um, yeah, makes sure. It's funny water. what you were saying about the like. You know, now you wouldn't do that stuff about. Oh, you know, fat people are aliens because they're fat. But that is television in a nutshell at that time. You got this. Yeah, yeah. You've got fat friends with yeah, uh, yeah. James Corden, that bastard. Um, you've got uh, <laughs> you've got what was that bloody program with that guy on channel? I think it was on Channel Four, and he used to go around and he'd be like, "Oh, they're disgusting fatties. Look at what they're eating." Um, oh, oh, what was that called? It not goes the around on used Twitter. To prod around in someone's poo. Not the not no, that not person. her. Not um, that Scottish woman. Um, Oh the no! This was like a, on I'm a celeb. I forgot. Yeah, her not her, but it goes around sometimes on Twitter, and people are like, "I can't believe this was this was television." But it's that it is that era, you know. It's, yeah, it, and, Trini and, and, and Susanna and, pop up later in this series. Yeah, and you know, Little Britain is the whole, yeah. um, you know, the the whole thing there with uh, that that exterior for number ten is borrowed from Little Britain as well. Is That's it the really same exterior they used to use for the Anthony Head Prime Minister sketches? Fantastic. Love it. Just needed Tom to turn up and go. Ah, if you if uh, you know if you notice a fat person, they might also be an alien. <laughs> <laughs> go and ask them. Are you a Slytherin? Uh, and then I'm a bit portly now and, and release a few farts <laughs> from time to time. But the but only zip from, I'm undoing is my flies. <laughs> that's years of drinking, assaulting my colon. Yes. <laughs> um, so that was Aliens of London, World War Three. Yeah. Um, we hope you all enjoyed that. Now, I'm having a look at the schedule, Matthew. I've got the Rod Master document open in front of me. Yeah. And because, you know, we might be talking about a trailer next, you might get a bonus yeah. emergency episode. We might be talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the next Machiavellian plot in Disney's, uh, you know, uh, urge to destroy this program as we know it and our enjoyment of it. Um, <laughs> It might be that we talk about something else entirely, but I've got a bigger list of things, Matt. What do you fancy doing next? Uh, as our little tease. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We've got quite a few things. I mean, we were talking about doing Ambassadors of Death, but I've got to be completely honest. The thought of sitting through that at the moment is oh, a really? big no-no. See, see, I was interested to do that one because I know that's a story that you really like. I do like it, but it's seven parts. It is seven parts, and it's a story that I'm not so keen on. Hmm. So it doesn't seem like either of us are getting anything out of that experience. No, but I just thought it would be interesting to, <laughs> uh, to, to revisit it. And uh... okay, well let's 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 pencil that in. Let's let's do the ambassadors of death next. Okay. Um, and I think it's and the we'll anniversary see... of that story. I think it's going to be forty years or something Perfect. this year. No, it isn't 40 years. I'm 50. talking complete and utter bollocks. Yeah, it might be 50 years. No, it's, no I'm, that's also wank. Because it was 1970, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> oh, we're not it's the, the, it's the it, it would have been airing at this month in 1970. In an yeah. arbitrary number of years yeah. in the past. <laughs> yeah. Um, at some point in this year, this episode went out and we'll yes. watch it months before. Um, yep. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have a look at doing the Ambassadors of Death next. Obviously, okay. there is a trailer imminently arriving. You may have already seen it by the time you tune into the episode. I hope it was good. Yeah. Uh, you may have already heard our thoughts and feelings on it. God knows. But yeah, um, yeah we'll be back with some more Doctor Who goodness when uh, the time is right. We yes. will emerge and take our rightful place. I had to finish that off. Sorry. Well, on that note, cheerio. See you next time. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, turn into a turn into a Nazi at the end there. Bye everybody. Bye bye. bye.